<laughs> Tonight we're doing a class, uh, second second night, and uh, this is going to be uh, a series that we're going to introduce, or we're going to teach a full course sometime that we're going to announce, and we're doing this tonight at Bridgehouse Ministries, and I'm Peter Coombs, and I'm having a good time doing this. So um, I'm going to do a short review from last week's uh, lesson, and uh, we started in Nehemiah 8 verse 10 and ended with a scripture that we all know uh, for the joy of the Lord is your strength so we, we went through that and discussed it um, we looked at uh, when the way that the whole approach for this course is that God created you and he knows how to fix you because he wrote the manual and and knows everything about you and uh, he created you he created your brain he created your body chemistry and uh, so God has the answers. Uh, we looked at two types of trauma uh, that we discussed out of the book that, w that we're doing the series out of, uh, which is uh, called The Life Model. Uh, and then there's a subtitle for it. It's uh, Living from the Heart That Jesus Gave You. So it's a, it's a book that we used in counseling years ago. And uh, it's very good because it talks about basically Christian psychology and, uh, and their approach is to look at the way that God created you. So um, we looked at type A trauma, which is things you missed out on. And those things uh, usually have to do with the way that you're loved or the nurturing. So if you didn't receive those in your home, then the love and the nurturing, then you call that uh, type A trauma. And then type B trauma is things that were done to you. So the trauma was uh, abuse or yelling or hitting from a parent or a grandparent or Teacher. something like that so yeah events that happened to you so one is things that you missed out on the way that God created you to receive nurturing and love and then the other is uh, usually sin based let's say and will be things events that you went through uh, somebody sinned against you or whatever so uh, some examples again is abuse so uh, we also looked at joy and the brain and we looked at the right orbital prefrontal cortex of the brain we talked about that and that's called the joy center and this is out again out of the book so uh, we talked about that and how uh, you need joy and where it comes from in the first two years of your life and uh, so if you missed that teaching you can go online to our YouTube and uh, look at that um, we also looked at uh, Jesus healing the sick, and um, in Matthew twelve fifteen, um, there's a verse, and it says, uh, "Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place, and a large crowd followed him, and he healed all who were sick." <laughs> and we looked up the definition of sick, which is actually uh, the Greek word therapuo. And it, one of the definitions means to heal, and other ones means to reverse a physical condition, to restore a person having an illness or a disease. So we looked at, um, especially with trauma or brain activity, where there was uh, trauma in the brain and different things, and that Jesus would be there and he would reverse what took place in your body, including what took place in your brain. So um, we talked about... Uh, Jesus taking a spiritual x-ray of you and looking at everything and being able to reverse those things. So how many can say amen? amen. And uh, one of the things we talked about was uh, that your memories are stored in chemicals in your brain and that Jesus can heal those. So that heal memories. So for us just being very technical, it's stored in chemistry. That's why in the chemicals in your body, that's why... Uh, our body chemistry is very important, so, and that God can heal that. So we've, we've seen um, uh, people that say they have chemical imbalances, and we know that you take a lot of pharmaceutical drugs to help balance those things. But the way that God created us was that he, he created, for example, joy to restore some of the balances back in your life. So we talked a little bit about um, serotonin enhancers, where in different enhancers that they try to do with body chemistry, but God created love and joy to do those things. So, um, amen? amen. And then we ended with um, being born again, where the hope that we have as Christians 
is uh, is that when when we're born again, and then we looked at what was uh, what was supposed to take place in nurturing and create joy and how it affects your brain, that God can bring you back to that, and so that you can start the process all all from fresh and have all those things coming from the Father. So um, it's very powerful truth, and we're going to go over some new truths today. So if you want to open your Bible. We'll start in uh, John chapter 8, verse 32. And this week I actually um, didn't follow anything in the book. The Lord just showed me things and I just went with it. So uh, it's all, of course, probably uh, circles around this because, you know, when you learn these things, it just becomes part of you and when you believe it. So... um, Let's all stand up for a minute. I want us to pray. Um, when we were during worship, I felt like um, something very specific was taking place, and I don't want us to miss it. So um, it was like uh, during worship, um, Rick Pino, I think the Rick Pino song or one of them, it, I think it was a song where he was talking about the rain coming and producing fruit in the ground or something like that. And, and, uh, Right away, the Lord kind of took me to the scripture about the fruit of the Spirit, to have things grow. So, uh, and then right before that, it was the same scene. It was like a garden, but God was there picking things from the garden. So what I think that is, is uh, like bad fruit or weeds. So that God wants to remove the bad things that are growing in your life, but also be there to produce a rain to cause the good things to grow. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just pray right now in Jesus' name that whatever's in us that needs to come out, Lord, whether it be memories or hurts or different things along these lines, Lord, Father, we ask you to come and soften that soil so that it can be easily pulled out. And also, Lord, that you would give us that revelation that these things need to come out and they're actually there. Father, we ask that you open our eyes and then, Father, we call in the rain yes. that, will, that will produce greater yields of fruit in our lives, Father, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So John 8.32 says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And then if you jump down to 8.36... So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. So we're going to spend a few minutes looking at this. And I thought, well, I'm going to look up some definitions. So the definition of the word um, setting free or that little short phrase is, um, I'm not going to try to give you the Greek word. Well, it looks like elethero. Anyways, it doesn't really mean anything to Yes. So properly it means to set free, release from bondage. Figuratively, figuratively to remove the restrictions of sin or darkness because delivered by God into true spiritual liberty. And then they give the uh, a breakdown of, so if the Son makes you free with one definition, then you will be free with another Greek word indeed. So they're actually not the same Greek word. So one one definition means the first one, If the Son makes you free, means to release from bondage. The second definition means to be unbound, unshackled, free to realize one's destiny in Christ, not a slave or under restraint. So just imagine that Jesus says, if if I set you free from any bondages, you're no longer a slave anymore. I mean, no, that's that's very good news because we don't sometimes we don't realize that we are in bondage to things or we're enslaved to things. But not only does God want to break something away from you, he wants to change who you are. So we this is a powerful truth that, you know, a lot of us, we struggle with ourselves and and we, we tell people, encourage them. God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you in the condition that you're in. So this is really true because he, he'll, he'll accept you the way you are when you come into the kingdom of God. But because of his love, it's impossible for you not to be transformed into his image. So he will not leave you the way that you are. And, and in context, we're going to say that he will not leave 
Uh, like last week's lesson, he will not leave our brains the way that they were before. They will, he will not leave our body chemistry. Amen. Have you ever thought about that? Like he's not going to leave our bodies with trauma. Yeah. In, in sort of deep counseling circles, you'll hear about uh, muscle memory. Oh. If uh, somebody was involved in a rep rep repetitive sin, it's like a, we call it a knee-jerk reaction. Amen. They'll just go to that or if there's addiction always going to the mouth or something like that. You've got that, what's called muscle memory. So, I mean, no, God can take care of that or remove that. Amen. If you have a, a nervous, nervous habit from the past, God can remove it and remove it from your body memory. Okay, so we got to know context of the word. I mean, you know, the word is full of life, but sometimes we don't know the life that's actually there in the word. And we need to, Amen. we really need to mind the word. So, um, as you, as you go over the Word, just sit. I used to do this years ago when I was uh, in, uh, at university. I'd say, I'd read something and go, God, what does this mean? And he'd say, blah, 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 and just tell me. I'd go, oh, okay. <laughs> and that's the relationship I had with the Lord where I would just ask him questions and he would just show me things. So um, how many think that's a good thing? Amen. Amen. So, um, so again... God releases you from bondages, but he also does, releases you from being a slave again. So um, in verse 34, the context of these two verses is everyone who sins is a slave to sin. When you sin, you are going against how God created you in your body and in your emotions and your soul. When you sin, you change the load that's on your body or change the load that's on your soul, your mind, and your emotions. Okay, now, let me really explain this because I, when I was writing this, I was like, I think I've shared this before, but it's been years. So, because I look at things, I have an engineering degree, so a lot of things I go by design, and my father was a mechanical engineer. So, my, type, my brain, my personality type looks at, constantly looks at design. So that's why I love this, because you were designed mm -hmm. a certain way. I mean, you know, you were created or designed Hallelujah. without sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, so when God created Adam and Eve, there was no sin. Hallelujah. So he created you. You got to really think about this. Now put your revelation, put your receiving caps on, because you were created one way. Mm -hmm. How many you know a lot of the things that we go through is because of the fall, obviously, because of what sin do, does to our bodies. Like, obviously, we have no idea what would happen uh, if sin hadn't come on the earth. But we can only imagine. You know, I don't know what aging would look like. Of course, what, you wouldn't have stomach problems. You wouldn't, you know, we'd, eyes wouldn't, age wouldn't affect your eyesight, all these things. So, um, but when we look at how God created you, let me give you an example this right here. Okay, this. If I held this in my hand for 10 minutes, do you think I would exert any kind of energy? No. Holding it there. I mean, very little. I would start to feel it after a while. I might just kind of lean to the side. So, my body is designed, my muscle system, all that, my brain, is designed to be able to hold this. Okay, so let's say this, for argument's sake, let's say this weighs a pound. It doesn't, but let's say it weighs a pound. So my body's designed to handle a pound. Your body's, right? Yeah. We can yeah. carry this, no problem. Any, even a child could carry that. Mm -hmm. So let's say one pound. Now let's say I multiply that to 100 pounds. So I've, all of a sudden I've got 100 pounds in my arm. <laughs> How long can I hold that? Like me holding 100 pounds, I haven't lifted 100 pounds since I was probably 18 or 19. So I couldn't do it very well right now. <laughs> okay. So even if I was in great shape. Okay. How many of you are in great shape? <laughs> One, two. Okay. So I'll, you could probably hold. Can you hold 100 pounds, Mark? 10 minutes probably. That long? No. No. I was going to say. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> so. Okay. So let's say, Mark, you can hold 100 pounds. Maybe what? Five or ten seconds, maybe a little longer. If you're carrying somebody, that's different. So, okay, so are you designed to carry a hundred pounds 
for let's say 10 hours. No. no. What starts to happen to your body after let's say 10 hours of holding 100 pounds? Aches, pain. Probably going to pull muscles. You know, where is it going to start hurting? Arms and back. Arms, back, legs, feet. Okay. So now let's take this, our design in our bodies, the same way are you designed to carry emotional loads. Wow. <laughs> okay, so how many of you know that um, sometimes you can look at a person and kind of tell what they've been through in their life or have a rough idea, right? And you can look at their eyes, but sometimes, how many know you can look at their bodies? Okay, like... I know back in, in history where they put, uh, I don't know if it was in England, but they had child labor mm -hmm. and they, they had them all hunched over. So in their 70s and 80s, you'd see these, you know, for, for a generation, you'd see them like this. Yeah. Well, they weren't designed to, to be in labor that long. Their bones were still forming and growing. Yeah. So it's the same thing with your emotions. It loads on top of you. Huh. And then... Your emotions will cause you to do this. So I've seen cases where we're setting people free and their posture will change uh -huh. because the emotional load has changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so sometimes like just in um, counseling situations or personal ministry, Hallelujah. It's, it's, you know, you see things, sometimes I look and say, do you have a headache? Yes. Yes, and one lady, um, well, it was a guy in, um, from well, St. John. We were actually in Mexico. And I saw what looked like this big weight on this person's head. And I asked the question, is your neck sore? He said, yeah. He said, how'd you know? I said, well, there's something on your head. It's a spiritual, it was a spiritual thing. But how many, that spiritual thing was causing physical pain. <laughs> and how many know there's a, there's a disease now called... Um, Fibromyalgia. Yeah. Even the doctors say it's unexplained pain. <laughs> and I had shared one time here before, there was a lady when I was a pastor, there was two of them actually, that came for counseling. And I'm not a doctor, I don't know about these things, but I asked the Holy Spirit. And he told me exactly what to do. And the they both had quite serious fibromyalgia. Both were married. Uh, one of the ladies, the Lord showed me, he said, tell her that every time she feels like she would get into bed with her husband just to go to sleep at night, and uh, he was very cuddly or whatever, and as soon as he would touch her, she would be racked with pain. So what was causing that pain? Doing this? Or was it emotional trauma? Emotional, emotional trauma. trauma. So, she, this lady, for example, was not designed, nor are you, designed to handle, let's say that probably was abuse case where she was hit and it involved touching by a man. So, years and years and years of this abuse, she developed a reaction that later in life, she's, I think she was about in her 50s, as soon as her husband would touch her, she would be, have all this pain, it was triggered. So I told, the answer was, whatever you feel like doing, rolling away, whatever it is, do the opposite. Okay. Well, she did the opposite, and in her case, she was totally set free. Imagine spending all of your adult life believing, this is the power of the mind, believing that if somebody is touching me, it causes this pain. And of course, every time it's, it happens, you're reinforcing something that's in your mind. It's true. I knew it. Every time so-and-so touches me, it's, I, it's not that. It's the memory. So can God heal your memories? Yes. So you understand that your body, like for years and years, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I used to be very st stressed out all the time. <laughs> And um, I think it was mainly because of my, the way my mother raised me, just total stress free. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he was a professional. <laughs> so I would get stressed out. And uh, I had, um, when I was at university, 
I had a migraine headache for one year, one solid year, just constant headache, took Tylenol 3s and all this stuff. And then when I got married, Alicia said, sort of like, relax, what's your problem? Kind of. She didn't say it that way, but that's basically, <laughs> and, uh, and I did, and my stress level went almost non-existent. So, but I, what happened was, is that, how many of you experienced stress before? And then what other results? Headaches, stomach problems. Okay, what does stress look like? It looks like a load. So a lot of times when we're praying for people, the Lord will tell me, he'll say, they have shoulder pain, they have neck pain. Okay, they have a headache. You have a headache right across here, yes. So, so why is that? I believe it's because... I don't need to get somebody standing up here, but if I was pushing on somebody's shoulders and then eventually I just grabbed on and just walked around and got this, let's say it's a big strong Kemp there, just got on his back and then just he started carrying me around and that's an emotional load. And so some people experience calf pain or foot pain, you understand back pain because of an emotional load that's actually physically manifesting in your body. So let's say you have constant foot pain and you go to the foot doctors and they can't figure out what's wrong with you. But again, let's go back to Jesus taking his, his x-ray look at you and go, oh, I see the problem. You say your feet are sore? That's nothing to do with your feet. That's to do with your emotional state, the constant fear that you're in, the constant stress that you're under. And that's a load. So what do we do with that? We, we ask the Lord to show us. A lot of times when I get headaches, I'd say, Lord, show me why I'm stressed out. And he'll go, okay. And boom, 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 this, this, this. And then guess what? There's no reason for me to be in stress anymore. And then I can go to the Word, look, for, find some scripture that, that relate, but then have a full revelation that I'm actually now taking off a load. Now here's one that's very uh, interesting. Is if uh, this one's kind of a tough one, but I'll share it anyways. If somebody has constant neck problems, especially on the back of the neck. Now don't get offended if you've had years, <laughs> but I'm going to share. This one's kind of tough. In the Word of God in the Old Testament, and they they have they might have a posture change too. God called the children of Israel stiff neck. Stiff neck. So, and what was the further definition? Rebellious people. So sometimes when you're, see, you could go to a doctor and he prescribed this, 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 this. But let's say you're going to, you're going through a season. I don't want to call it a season, but it, let's say a period of time where you are rebellious. And the manifestation for rebellion is a stiff neck. Okay. What does that have to do with your physical body? It, it doesn't have anything. See, you understand where you search for the answers within your physical body. But the fa physical body is manifesting your emotional state. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Are the lights going on and the elevators going all the way to the top? Yeah. You're awful quiet. Are you processing everything? It's okay. interesting. Okay. So, um, again, we're not designed. God created us perfect. But because of the fall of man, now we have all these things. Stress, fears, all these things. Uh, fear is a very interesting one because it can do all kinds of things. Uh. I, I had unusual fears. And then I was getting reactions <coughs> on my skin and all different things. It's like... Okay, well, the first thing I need to do is find out what's wrong with my skin. No, the first thing I need to do is to go to the Holy Spirit and say, what is wrong? Show me what's wrong. I really want to know, Holy Spirit, so that I can be set free from... I mean, no, you're, this is where your body's talking to you. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Amen. So people have chronic this, chronic that. <laughs> then are, is it physical because you picked up 
200 pounds because you thought you were a 16 year old with ripped muscles and all that and you went and is that what's causing your pain or is it because of emotional weight that you cannot handle mm -hmm. right Good. so you need to you need to be able to tell the difference am i too tired because i've overworked myself or am I always tired because of my emotional state is weighing down on me? Okay? Amen? All right. Everybody good? All right. So let's turn to 2 Corinthians 4.10. This is good. Everybody say, this is good. This is good. This is good. Now here's a scripture. I don't know if I've shared it here. But I've never heard preaching on it. And uh, it's pretty good. 2 Corinthians 4.10. And I'm reading out of NIV. It's not no, it's good. Not good. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Alright. Everybody got your phones out with your Bibles on them? Yep. Nope. I'll, show, I'll read it so that you know. All right, 2 Corinthians 4.10. We always, everybody say always. 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 Okay, that's enough. All right. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. Did you know that? Did you know that that's a verse in the Bible? Of course, I've shared it here with you before. So, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body mm -hmm. wow. this has nothing to do with your spirit this is your body wow, wow. we Read always carry around in our body the death of jesus so that the life of jesus may also be revealed in our body wow think about this how many of you know that dead people have no diseases no sickness no injury yeah. no chronic pain no chemical imbalances no stomach problems no foot problems Right. But we're dead in Christ. That's right. Okay? Hey, that's good, eh? So, but at the same time, we receive life. Does that sound like the born-again experience? If Jesus said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. How many of you can honest, honestly say you've experienced the abundant life? Maybe on the beaches of so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so for an hour or two. But I mean, no, if you're sick in your body, you have injuries, you have whatever, you're, you're not fully, t you haven't fully received what Jesus paid with his body for. Hmm. Okay, I want that full revelation. Yes. I want you to have that full oh, revelation yeah. so that we get, we get everything we can from this scripture. If we carry around the death of Jesus, the sole reason that I should be able to look at you, you can look at me and say, what's that? That's the death of Jesus. Why is it there? So that the life of Jesus can manifest in my body. Well, that's profound. Okay, there was a, a couple of years ago, I was in the backfield there. And um, I think it was the first year, actually, that we were on the farm. And, of course, it's really green. Lots of plant, lots of trees and shrubs and low, low plants, everything. And I just happened to look up and I was like, wow. And it was fall, like late fall, probably late November, early December. And I was looking, I was like, wow, look how different that looks. And, and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit started talking to me saying, everything is dead. And when death comes, it reveals everything that was hidden. <laughs> because I saw garbage. I saw old concrete. I saw tires. And I was like, oh. I guess the farmers here years ago used to make little dumps everywhere. And I didn't know that it was there being in a summer season. A winter season, a season of death had to come for me to be able to see what was hidden. So I believe that's a prophetic thing to say that when I know that the death of Jesus is in my body, it's there to reveal the dead things and the hidden things that are there. So that I can take those out and have the life of Jesus revealed in my body. Wow. How many of you want the life of Jesus oh, yeah. revealed? And the word reveal there is manifested, made hey. manifest. Wow. wow. 
How many of you are there? No, I'm not there. How many of you want to be there? Come on, you should raise both hands. One, two, three, four. How many of you? Okay, so all of us. All right. Let's look at uh, another scripture. Second Corinthians five seven. We brought this up uh, last week, but we're going to read it and look get it get some definitions. Yeah, this one is, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So the, the, uh, the word or the word new creation. Yeah, what did I say? Seven. Oh, sorry. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Sorry, we forgive you. Okay. So new creation means uh, new creation, creature, or institution. Like a new institution. So, uh, the, the definition, this is in the Greek, when you look up in uh, Strong's Concordance. This is by definition, often of the founding of a city. Creation, creation, creature, institution. Always of divine work, institution or ordinance. Uh, one of the root words means creation, creature, which is founded from nothing. How many of you, let me keep reading here because I, I, the Lord showed me something on, about this. Really cool. <laughs> By definition, the act of creating or the product that comes from creating. So when, when uh, the, the word of God says you are a new creation, it, it can be the act of creating or the result of being created. Okay, the, the product. So you're the product of God creating. You understand there's two things going on. God is releasing power to create. You're the result of creation. And by definition, he's creating you from nothing. (laughs) Now, this this is what's really cool. I would say it's safe to say, including myself, all of us, and if we had thousands of people, a hundred thousands of people here, according to we know the born again experience, where you're you're born of the spirit, but how I many you know your body was not reborn? Oh. Mm-hmm. But this scripture talks about us being a new creation, a new creature. So something brand new. When you were born again. Okay, give me a few ages of when you were born again. I was seven. 31. 31? 28. No, you... Yeah, yeah, about 28. Anybody else? 40. 40? Mm -hmm. 50 in the 50s? Okay, so we got quite a variety. So, no matter how old you were, God took you and recreated you from nothing. But the way that we perceive our Christianity is God took us with all of our mess and then put his spirit in the mess. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So that we believe that we're still a product of our parents, our environment, our abuses, our bad history, our bad decisions. Mm-hmm. My parents had high cholesterol. My, my this, my it's that. It's in my family. It's in my family, yeah. yeah. And what do the doctors do? Mm-hmm. Say, give me a history of your parents. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do as Christians? We go, well, it makes sense. My parents are the ones that had me. So I am a product of my parents. Not so if you're a believer. We have total access. How I many know salvation is available to everybody on the planet? Yeah. Amen. That's right. But how many people are accepting Jesus or receiving Jesus? No. And 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 how many of you? Re- how many are receiving Jesus? That's one yeah. category. What's the ad- other category that are receiving stuff like this? Mm. The full. How many? How many know that a lot of people are going to get to heaven? Mm-hmm. 
having made it because they died of a disease and died of sickness right. and mm -hmm. yeah. okay I want to be a part of helping to change that including mm -hmm. for myself Amen. Amen. so that I'm living this I am a brand new creation yeah, because our inheritance has changed. Right. From an earthly father to a heavenly father. Right. Hey. And I, my parents were saved you young mean? enough so that because I was seven. So I was yeah, raised in a Christian home. When we were saved. Right. We started going to church. You were four. Yeah. But we you were four. Saved at seven. Right. So <laughs> I was raised in a Christian home. Even though I have godly parents, it doesn't mean that I, that I should separate from. The sin patterns or the heritage mm -hmm. of this kind of disease and that kind of disease. Because I have every right, if you want to talk about courts of heaven, I have every right to claim to be a brand new creation. Amen. Yes. Amen. Before God, mm -hmm. before my parents, before my history, before my sin, mm -hmm. I can stand before God and say, God, I come into agreement with this scripture right hey. here. Second Corinthians five seventeen that calls me a brand new creation. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I share the story about your eye and what the doctor said? Yeah. All of a sudden, well, it was it happened here. I think. I won't say your name, but Mr. Joe here had his retina just detach. And the doctor said, it just happens. Well, it's not really something you can pray. Like, you're never going to think something's going to happen like that. And I don't know if there was family history or anything like that. No. No, it's just one of those things that happens. Well, I don't want, th like, when that happened, I was like, oh, that's terrible. Like, I don't know, it was painful or... Because I took him for the surgery, and it was quick surgery, but still, like, I don't want somebody opening this and going in there and all these things that people go through and, you know, sicknesses and diseases. But how many know how many, how many of us Christians don't even know that we have full access to not have these things happen Amen. to us? So if, it, if we're learning it today, praise God. And then we can start educating other people Amen. so that Hallelujah. so that Mr. Joe here is going to be a herald to say, don't let this happen to you yourself. Know that this revelation, like I don't want to know family history from like I know in, in, uh, in my mother's family, a lot of the men died young in their 50s. Some of them had nothing to do with. Uh, uh, my grandfather was a heart attack and I think his brother got hit by a tree cutting it down with a chainsaw and then this one died this one died this one died that doesn't sound like abundant life <laughs> or the blessings are overtaking me so I don't receive that I receive that I'm a brand new creation formed from nothing in other words God didn't take what I had and looks at me and go well Wow, look at what he's done in his life. He's done this, he's done this. Oh well, I'm going to put you together. And hopefully it comes out good. No, he says, I'm going to take and create you a brand new creation. New creature in Christ Jesus. So that you don't have... You're not made from what you were. Mm. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that have um, uh, low self-esteem and... Even as Christians, we go through depression and we go through this and I'm this, I'm a loser, I'm a failure. Well, when you're, when you're made a whole new creation, you get to press that reset button and say, God, you reset it in me. I'm going to start to line up my life with the way that I have been reset. Instead of always looking back, I mean, no, the devil's very good at reminding you of, his, of your past. <laughs> But I have to choose to live from the Word of God. Okay, I got to take this and say, no, this is what I live from. But I need to learn it, and you need to do the same. Right. Look up some definitions so you get the English. Look, I don't know if you realize this, but the English language does not do justice to the Word of God. Amen. I shared it before, where the word um, love has in the Greek has I think three or four different. 
uh, definitions. The word word has at least two, logos and rhema. And we, you know, I shared it before where in church you'd have a sword drill and the word sword, we'd say it's the word of God, which is scripture. But the word word there is not this. It's actually this, the tongue. The tongue is sharper than any two-edged sword. sword. When you see Jesus riding on a horse with a sword coming out of his mouth, everybody goes bananas and say, wow, what's that going to be like? <laughs> That's the power of his word. And the word, the, the scripture there where it says that the word of God uh, is the sword, the sword of the spirit, the word sword there is the word judicial punishment. And the word word there is the word rhema. So it's actually the prophetic word is the judicial punishment. So when we talk about the courts of heaven, when we make proclamations, we are releasing judicial punishment against the enemy with the sword of the Spirit. You can use this, but it's actually this. I mean, no, you can read this in your mind, but you're not releasing the power of the sword of the Spirit. It's when you begin to say it and uh, proclaim it, then you're releasing that power. So um, let's all stand up and we're going to end with this um, activation for healing. So we're going to get this on camera so that everybody that wants to take part in this, we're going to release the power of healing. Okay, so Father... I'll, I'll let's just let me pray for a minute and then um, and then I'll get you to repeat. I wrote this prayer out uh, this afternoon. Thank you, Father. I want us to go to a um, uh, a belief, uh, an area of belief. Yes. One of the things that I've questioned the Lord on is, you know, the effectiveness of this. Might sound silly to you, but I've thought about these things. Like, why does Benny Hinn have such success in healing Amen. and others like that? Especially uh, people that move in that type of ministry. And I, and the Lord, I felt like the Lord said to me, because of the worship that's going on. Amen. So I said, he said, okay, think about this. You know, to Jesus, heaven and earth was one realm. But to us, it's two realms. Yeah. Wow. So remember in Scripture, in the New Testament, it says, Jesus said, I only see what I see the Father doing. How can the Father, who's in heaven, what's he watching Jesus do? What is Jesus watching the Father do if he's in heaven wow. and if he's healing people on the earth? So what does that tell you? To Jesus, both realms were together. So Jesus was watching the Father have a hand on you. Thank you, Jesus. And he go, okay, this one needs to be healed. Oh, wait. His hand's on you. It's 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 on... Wait a minute. Jesus, last week we shared a scripture. I think it was in Matthew 5, 17, I think. Jesus healed all. (laughs) So that means... God was healing all. That's what Jesus saw. We also read the scripture about where Jesus was the word in the beginning. He was this. Then he became the word. <laughs> he was this. And then that word, everything, obviously it'd be Old Testament, became flesh and Jesus was God's entire existence put on the earth and demonstrated so when Jesus healed all he was demonstrating who God was I mean no they didn't think that's what God was the God that heals the God that performed miracles with the 5,000 with the 4,000 They didn't think that's who God was, but Jesus went in demonstration to do that. Hallelujah. So, does God want to do the same thing here tonight? Yes. Yes. How many of you want to be totally set free from your past, totally set free 
from chronic this, this thing. I had a car accident. I had a motorcycle accident in, yeah. what year was it? 94. My mother's had two car accidents. One in, I think, 1981 or two. 1987. No, that was the second one. Oh, sorry. 2016. I have three then. Three? Yeah. 2016. 2016. <laughs> Oh yeah, that one. She had a really serious car a, accident, yeah, exactly. 1987. How many of you had car accidents or accidents or anything like that? Many. Wow, that's a lot. A lot. How many of you had a physical injury from that accident? And then we're not going to give a survey a show of hands of trauma, early childhood trauma. You know, it could be a lot. Well, okay, we can do that. I mean. Abuse or anything like that, okay? And if you, you yourself were involved with alcohol or drugs, there's a lot of trauma there because then you're opening up to the demonic realm. That's a totally different trauma. So even certain types of music could open you up. So you got lots of areas. Mm -hmm. And then how many of you have been a new creation for, for me, it's been over 40 years. So... But I'm still learning new revelation. Mm -hmm. So is it too late for me? No. No, because no, I'm still a new creation. Mm -hmm. And I was still formed from right. nothing. Mm -hmm. Is that good or bad? That's we good. We start the race to start the race. <laughs> we started the race to finish it. That's right. <laughs> so as I get more of revelation, as you get more of revelation, then we're actually living that life that Jesus promised to say, I not only give you life, which means existence, but I give you the ability to overcome everything that's in the world. Come on. And please, I'll, get a, I'll do a short bunny trail here. I've shared this scripture, I think, at our conference about the God of this world. That word world there is the, world, is the word systems. So Satan is the God of his system, not God's. Amen. God created the planet for you, for righteous men and women. In the end, it will not be the wicked that inherit the earth. You will not find that in here. You will never find it. God will never hand over the planet to Satan. And I grew up hearing that the, the, the earth is on loan to Satan until Jesus returns. And I got news for you. Jesus has already established his kingdom on the earth. He has already crowned king. He's already crowned you kings and, and he's priests. Reigning. He's not waiting to do these things. Right. He is a reigning yes. Jesus, Amen. raising oh, up Lord. kings and priests. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's no distinction now. We are kings and priests. We are a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. We are a holy nation. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So Jesus is already reigning. Our hope is not when we die. Our hope is now. now. That's right. So that's why we're allowed now, to receive our inheritance Jesus died and paid the price, and you get the inheritance. You don't have to die to receive your inheritance in this mm -hmm. case. Your children's children's children don't have to have you die. They receive it now when they're born again. So we want to receive... How many of you want to live totally set free from things that entangled you? Amen. How many? Amen. One, two, three. Everybody does. So we're going to pray this prayer, and you're going to repeat after me. Amen. We're going to we're going to chase Satan down. We're going to chase God down. Okay? We're going to we're going to enter the courts of heaven now. We're going to take a, a bit of a lesson here. So, all right, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Ready. Are you in faith now? Yes. Amen. Ready to receive. All right, repeat after me. I stand in the courts of heaven. I stand in the courts of heaven to make these declarations. To make these declarations to God, to God and also to my accusers on earth. And also to my accusers on earth. So think about the people that have made accusations against you. Family, husbands, wives, former husbands, wives, all these things. So I stand in the courts of heaven to make these declarations to God and also my accusers on earth and Amen. To the accuser, to the accuser Satan. 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 So I want you to picture now, you're in the courts of heaven. God is there on his throne. There's also, of course, the uh, all the witnesses, the cloud of witnesses are there. 
your accusers are there and Satan is there. And I don't, we're not going to get into doctrine of how that functions where Satan can be there. I'm not going to get into that. All right, ready? I am born again. I am born again. Therefore, Therefore my, body my body is not subject, is not subject to, my past. to my past. Satan, Satan I, command you, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to take your hands off my body and my soul. And my soul. Satan, Satan, you will no longer afflict me. You will no longer afflict me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My body, my body is now subject, is now subject to the word. To the word. The word and the truth. And the word and the truth are Jesus. Are Jesus. Do you understand that? Yes. Because yes. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right. So we know that the Word of God here is the truth, but also Jesus became the truth. He is the truth. He is the Word. Okay. So my body is now subject to the Word, which is the word, written Word. The Word and the truth are Jesus. All right. Ready? The Word of God says that I carry around the death of Jesus in my body. So that the life of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may, be revealed may be revealed in my body. In my body. So by the authority of the word, I now receive life to my body. I receive healing to my body. I receive healing to my brain. I receive healing to my brain. I receive Body chemistry wholeness. I receive body chemistry wholeness. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. Okay. It is done. So, one of the things, obviously, this is a one time thing. It's something you can watch again, but also keep exercising. Because mm -hmm. how many know the devil comes to rob, kill, and destroy? Yeah. He wants to destroy revelation, kill your joy, kill. Mm -hmm your body. We do not have to accept uh, processes of aging because you, like in my head I hear, oh, your eyesight this, da, 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 da. And I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> this does not apply to me, nor does it have to. Because I'm aging doesn't mean I have to receive what the world receives. How I many you know my God looks very different than the world's God? Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I position myself to serve God, then I receive from his from serving him. I mean, know that everybody that serves Satan receives what their service Hallelujah. releases to them. But Jesus. it's more is true for me that when I serve God, I receive the same. I receive the benefits of serving Him when I worship Him. When I when I take time in His Word, I receive the benefits. And then when I act in faith, when God can look in you and say. I see their faith. Amen. Amen. So let's just, let's just close with, uh, with some more prayer. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we receive into our spirits right now. I, I just release that ability in our spirits to process everything that we're learning, Father. That our bodies... Lord, we, we read in the scripture, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Lord, there's got to be a benefit for carrying the presence of the Holy Spirit in our, in our physical bodies. Thank you, Father. So, Father, we receive revelation right now in Jesus' name. We receive deliverance from demonic oppression. We receive deliverance or being set free from things that have been uh, voices in our heads and things that are coming against our mind and our thought life. Lord, so, Father, when we can actually say that I take every thought captive and subject it to the name of Jesus. And Father, it actually works because your word works. Faith works. So Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 You can get excited. Amen. 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 Amen.